Okay, welcome to my Cisco Scaling Networks lab review. Here we're doing lab 7224, configuring basic EIGRP with IPv4. So, notice first of all, I've had my lab running about two minutes. Everything is green, so all the router updates have been sent. Everything is in a forwarding state, so we're good there. I have this on a different screen. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to uh, part one. Let's hop over to R1 and let's go ahead and set up our EIGRP. We have to get to our privilege, then we have to get to, sorry, yeah, we have to get to our privilege and we have to get to our configure terminal. All right, so let's go ahead and verify what router AS number that we're going with. So actually, I don't have to be in the global config for that. I can just do in the user exec mode, show run. You're going to see that this is all going to be pretty standard and default. What I really care about is that guy right there. Uh, and what's really funny is that is showing router OSPF 1. I do not see... router EIGRP. So, enable the EIGRP process. So here we're going to be uh, configuring it on router 1 because it currently is not there. How do we do that? Router EIGRP. I'm going to do question mark. You're going to notice the next portion is the internal AS number which in this example we're just using the AS number 1. So, router EIGRP 1 sets it up. You'll notice it then goes into a config, uh, subconfig for router hyphen config. Let's go ahead and do that for each of the three routers. Next R2, enable config T, router EIGRP 1, same thing for router 3, enable config T, router EIGRP 1. Alright, so all of them have been configured to use the same AS number. Next, step 2, we're going to go ahead and advertise these networks right here on R1. So how we do that is the network statements. Because those are the networks that they know about So we're going to go ahead and program them in, just like with OSPF, with the appropriate wildcard masks. Again, we have one for this network, one for this network, one for that network. Really? So once we've done that, we're going to go to R2, and again, we're going to program those three addresses in. Network, we're doing the first one, 172.16.2.0. Inverse mask of 24 is that guy. Network, 172.16.3.0. That's using a slash 30. Inverse mask of a slash 30 is a dot 3. Now it's going to form the adjacency now that R1 and R2 can communicate. Now let's go ahead and do our last network, which should be the connection between R2 and R3. 192.168.10.8 slash 30, again, is a 0003. And that finishes off R2. We program in those three network statements. R3, we're going to program in these three network statements. Any directly attached network is what we're going for. Network 192.168.1.0 with a 255 as a wildcard mask. That's that guy right there. 
Next is, it doesn't really matter the connection between R3 and R1 or R3 and R2. They're both going to have to be there. 192.168.10.4. And it's doing a slash 30, so a dot 3 is the inverse of that. Network 192.168.10.8. And again, that's also using a slash 30, so the inverse of that is R.3 again. So, two adjacencies, one to R3 to R2, and one from R3 to R1. So we go ahead and we did that. Next, we need to set up passive interfaces. We do not want router updates going to the LAN. So how we do that is passive interface and we're putting it on their gigabit interface. We're going to do that for all of them. Passive interface gig. Basically this tells it don't send router updates to the LAN. That way if you have a rogue router on your LAN you don't end up with routes being injected into your network that you didn't want in the first place. Alright, so step three is done. Next, let's go ahead and disable auto summary. Here we're going to issue a no auto summary command. R1, no auto summary. Again, no AU. I'm, I just hit tab to tab it out. This turns off the ability to do auto summarization. And that's okay for our labs. Prior to iOS 15, auto summary had to be manually disabled. Luckily, we're running 15 and above, so don't have to worry about it. Part 5, I'm not saving the configuration, but you can if you wish. So, which command will display the neighbors? How do we get this type of Output. So I'm going to hop on R1. I'm going to get back to my user mode. And the question is how do we do neighbor discovery? Show IP EIGRP question mark. Well, we have interface, we have neighbors, topology, and traffic. So let's go ahead and do neighbors. We can do a specific number or a specific AS number. So for what we want to do, let's just do neighbors and see what happens. And lo and behold, show IP EIGRP neighbor. It shows the instance for AS number one. Shows our adjacencies on R1. And that's what we want. And this is similar to this. Addresses and interfaces. Hold timers are different, up timers are different, and sequence numbers are different. That's okay. Our big concern is our addresses and our interfaces. On R2, enter the command. You've listed 2A and answer for all the following questions. All right, so. Show IP EIGRP neighbor. How many routes are shared on R2? We have two. Where is the information located? This is located under the routing and information sources. What's the maximum hop count? What's really funny is it does not say. Oh, actually, that's because I'm still working on A up here. Let's go ahead and go through question A on step two. Let's go ahead and do a show IP protocols. What command displays the parameter and other information about the current state? That's show IP protocols.
what happens if I read the entire question? Alright, so to B, using show IP, uh, show IP protocols, answer these questions. How many routes? There are two. This information is again still located under router information sources. This guy right here. What's our maximum hop count? Maximum hop count is 100. Lastly, let's verify end-to-end -end connectivity. Make sure we can ping each of them before we get done. So from PC1, ping PC2 and 3. And that's what I plan on doing. 172.16.2.10 The first one should fail because it needs to send out ARP requests. But it should pick up, and it did. Next, go ahead and ping PC3. 192.168.1.10 Again, the first one should fail, but then it should pick back up. And it did. Perfect. So, in the community, uh, Connectivity is there. Let's go ahead and check results. Okay, assessment items. Everything is checked. If you have any questions on this lab, please let me know. Thank you.